I hope you're doing well today. Thank you for joining me. We're going to continue to look at the book of Jonah today. Today we're actually going to be looking at the Ninevites. Today's hymn is, I Bring My Sins to Thee. I bring my sins to thee, the sins I can, I count, that all may cleansed be, in thy once open found. I bring them, Savior, all to thee, the burden is too great for me. The burden is too great for me. I bring my grief to thee, the grief I cannot tell. No words shall needed be, thou knowest all so well. I bring the sorrow laid on me, O suffering Savior, all to thee, O suffering Savior, all to thee. My life I bring to thee, I would not be my own, O Savior, let me th be thine ever. O Savior, let me be thine ever, thine alone. My heart, my life, my all I bring, thee my Savior and my King, to thee my Savior and my King. Let's look in Jonah chapter 3 at verse 4. And Jonah began to enter the city on the first day's walk. Then he cried out and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So the people of Nineveh believed God, proclaimed a fast, and put on sackcloth, and from the greatest to the least of them. Then word came to the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne and laid aside his robe, covered himself with, with sackcloth and sat in ashes, and he caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything, do not let them eat or drink water. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily to God. Yes, let every one turn from his evil way and from the violence that is in his hands. Who can tell if God will turn and relent and turn away from his fierce anger, so that we may not perish? Then God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way, and God relented from the disaster that he said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. And Nineveh is spared. As I was reading that, I was thinking about, I believe this is the case that in World War II, when Germany was about to attack England, I believe the prime minister at the time, I believe they proclaimed a fast for the nation, wanting them to pray to the Lord. Nineveh, the king proclaims a fast. It's, it's a wonderful account. It's just amazing in the Old Testament when you see Gentiles, you see Gentile kings like Nebuchadnezzar learning there is one God, not you. Just a wonderful thing when that happens, when Darius recognizes God, Gentile king. A wonderful thing. Cyrus, the one the Lord is going to use when the captives come back. A wonderful thing. Well, here, the king of Nineveh and all of Nineveh, it begins this way. They believed. He scooted back up a little bit. So the people of Nineveh believed God. And that's what they did. They believe. Why won't people repent? Why don't people repent? It's because they don't believe. That's why. Nineveh believed. I mentioned this yesterday. They obviously had an inkling who God was and who God was. Just as just as Jonah, just as Nineveh was Jonah's sworn enemy, so the Jews were Nineveh's enemies, and you know who your enemy is. And so now word has come. The word has come. And they believed. Second point I want to make, though, the second point I would like to make is this, that it was from the greatest to the least of them. The king arose from his throne 
and proclaims this fast, as he sits in sackcloth and sat in ashes, and they proclaimed it throughout Nineveh, from the least of them to the greatest of them. Not many noble are called, not many who are proud will humble themselves. But the king of Nineveh did. And so we might think about that idea. From the least to the greatest, I believe that phrase is used concerning the Passover and those who would perish, the firstborn. From the least to the greatest. Seems like that phrase is also... Nope, I'm thinking of something else. The oldest to the youngest in the account of the adulterous woman. But I'm sure the phrase is probably used elsewhere. Back to our account. We also see the Lord looking upon their works. Verse 10. Then God saw their works that they turned away, turned from their evil way, and God relented from the disaster that he said he would bring upon them. It's all their works. For a lot of folks, works are a four-letter word. And they think, ah, works has nothing to do with it. Read James chapter 2, and you'll find out that God very much looks on the works of man. And he looks upon us just as he looked upon Nineveh. What it is is bearing fruits worthy of repentance. When Paul is writing to the Corinthians, because the Corinthians needed to repent, and he talks about how, how they had sorrowed in a godly manner, but the godly sorrow had manifested itself in certain ways. With vehement desire, with zeal, with indignation, with all these things. Well, here Nineveh is, and notice, notice what it says. Let's see. Let me, let me back it up a little. Caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout Nineveh. From mightily to God. Notice verse 8. Let everyone turn from his evil way and from the violence that is in his hands. They knew they were sinning. They knew they were doing. They knew what they were doing was wrong in the eyes of God. They knew their ways were not God's ways. And so if, if God is going to relent, they know what they need to do. They need to, they need to repent. Bear fruits worthy of repentance. We'll also add, um, just to think about, oh, let everyone turn, turn from his evil way and from the violence that is in his hands. As I said, they were... Enemies of the Jews. And so as, as, think about Jonah. Here Jonah is, and he doesn't want to go to Nineveh. And it's like, hey, this is good for, this is good for Nineveh. <laughs> That's one of the, going to be one of the messages. But this is also good for Israel. This is good for the Jews. Because Nineveh is your enemy. And now, at least for a time, they are turning away from their violent ways. And so it's good for Israel. It's good for Nineveh. And it's good that God is glorified. We'll talk more about that tomorrow. Think about these, these applications as even Nineveh repents. The Lord refers to this, by the way, about Nineveh repenting at the preaching of Jonah and someone greater than Jonah had appeared, namely himself. Have a good day. Join us tomorrow for another portion of our daily praise.